When running a program, we want it to tell us what data we need to feed to it. And when it brings results, we expect it labels each one of the results with a tag of some sort, like radius or volts or something like that. In the HP 48G Plus and HP 50G, there are two commands for doing this prompt and make me a tag. As a very simple example, let's use a voltage divider. Two resistors like this one in series between the reference node and a certain one to which we apply a total voltage Vt and the values are R1 ohms and R2 ohms. Each one of them will divide the total voltage Vt proportionally to the values of the resistances in V1 and V2, as seen. And the formulas are very simple. V1 will be proportional to the total voltage to the resistance R1 and inversely proportional to the sum of them both. And something similar applies to the voltage in resistor 2. Let's write a program that requests the user for one, two, three items as input and produces two, these ones and this one. How are we going to do that? By utilizing two new instructions, the command prompt and the command make me a tag. Let's see how it works. As usual, we write our program between chevrons like so, chevrons, and we begin with a string. Double quote, and we write something like enter. Normally, I do not write enter. It's too much typing. Enter VT, R1, R2. That is just to inform the user what needs to be typed in three pieces of data in that order. And right after that, I issue the command prompt. Prompt displays that on the screen and stops the execution of the program until the user issues the combined command continue. This one, see? In green on the HP 49, in white in the HP 50. You press the white key or the green key in this case and the on key to continue the execution of the program when the program has stopped at a prompt instruction. So this is displayed. The program stops here. The user types VT, R1 and R2. Now those values are on the stack like this. We will extract the three pieces of data from the stack and assign that to local variables. This is the command to do that. That means extract from the stack enough values, a variable called vt, a variable called r1, and a variable called r2. We are creating three local variables that will disappear once the execution of the program ends. Those local variables will be in use within an inner set of chevrons like that. In there, I write an expression like this. Vt multiplied by R1 divided by the sum of R1 plus R2 close apostrophe evaluate and that is V1. Instead of just leaving that value on the stack with no further identification, I will do something else. I will type a little string that I'm going to call V1 and I instruct the calculator to make a tag out of that together with the value on the top. Hmm, you want to see that in operation? Well, let's do that for a moment before programming. In the calculator, let's say you have a value like 7.8 on the stack and you want to tag it with a label with, with apostrophe, alpha, alpha, I write any label, enter. Observe, I have a value and I have a little tag underneath. If I go to program, type, there is this command, make me a tag. When I punch it, it will make what is in level one a tag of what is in level two, like this, observe. Let me see, 
Now you have tagged this value that used to be in level two with this string. This is what I'm doing, tagging this numerical value with V1. The same way we compute Vt R2 divided R1 plus R2. I evaluate that, I have a numerical value, and now I tag that with V2. Now we have a program that takes in three values after prompting the user for what is necessary and then outputs results that are labeled or tagged. There are two levels of chevrons, the external one and the internal ones, where the local variables vt, r1, and r2 exist. After the program finishes, those variables are deleted. Those are local or temporary variables. Let's code that. Chevrons, double quotes, over here on top of the X in red. And in there I write vt space r1 space r2. I get out of the string with the arrows keys space. And then I type prompt. And then I say from the stack with this, this function on top of the zero in red, from the stack, get three values. And those values you're going to store in local variables with these names, uvt, that is one, and r1, and r2. I could use any names, but these make sense. Those three local variables will exist inside these two internal chevrons. In there, I will use those variables inside an expression, single quotes like that, and I write an expression like multiply uvt times r1 and divide that by parentheses parentheses r1 plus r2. I get out of the quotes with space and I say evaluate that expression and that will be v1. Let me go to the next line and on the next line I will create a tag like this. Tag I write any string but inside single quotes. I will write there v1 get out of that that will be a tag and now we make a tag out of that with programs type make me a tag. And we do exactly the same for the other voltage. Like this one, and we do exactly the same for V2. We compute it like here with this expression, evaluate the expression, and then we attach the tag V2 to that value. This program will prompt the user for those three values, Vt, R1, and R2. And then when you enter the values and instruct it to continue, it produces those two tagged values. Let's store that in a variable and run it to see how it works. Now that we have stored the program in this variable vdiv, we can run the program to see how it performs. Running that, it prompts us with this string vtr1 and r2. We know we have to enter those three values and to enter them in that order. Let's say we enter 100 volts space, 37 ohms space, 72 ohms. Observe that I separate the parameters with a space. I could separate them with enters, but if I do that, the prompt disappears from the screen. No big deal, but in a long prompt, I prefer to keep the prompt there so that I know what I'm typing. So that's why I use spaces instead of enters when I'm entering data for a program with a prompt. And then we go to green continue or white continue in the HP 50, and the results are V1 is 33.9 and V2 is 66.06 .06 volts. That's the way those 100 volts are divided between those two resistors. Thank you very much.